Hi guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. We've got a lovely day. We're gonna make a lobster pot out of bike wheels and plastic alkaline pipe. The idea of it is we've been out with the wheels lately and uh, we've seen lobsters coming from the bottom of our crab wheels instead of going in. So we're gonna try and design a little pot to uh, sort of gonna be like a cookie shape with lobster entrances and hopefully we can find them that way. Woo! What I'm doing for the start, so I've got my wheel and all I want is three lengths of pipe, just enough to create three loops on the wheel. So it's a third each one. So I'm gonna get on cutting these now and show you the next step. doing now so I've got my black pipe and on the ends of them because we're going to be bolting them to the frame I'm putting some thinner blue pipe on the inside just a few inches and what that does is just create it a little bit more strength when we bolt it in in place so I'm gonna get on put all of them through like that now get the uh, Get the next step ready. Now we've got our blue pipe in all of the ends. What I'm doing now is just gonna line one, one part up to a hole in the wheel. And all I'm doing is drilling it through with a nine mil drill bit. And then I'm gonna line up the plastic with the hole. Once you get the first one all right, then it's not so bad. Okay. And a cable tie it for now until I get my bolts. Forgot to get those today. Me and Sam are going to be using these a lot in the up and coming conga videos. So I want them to be as strong as possible. So there's the first one, already in, you can see it's just rough at the moment. So I'm going to get the other two on now, and I'll show you the next step of this. Woo! As you can see, we've got our three rings on there, and all we're doing Drilling a hole through the top of these. That one. It's a great way of doing it, this, because bike wheels, you can pick them up for nothing. And all you're doing is lining the second wheel inside these tubes. There we go. I'm going to drill out a couple of holes. Get there we go. And all I'm doing is matching the two holes up. And then, like I say, when I get my bolts, I'll be bolting all of this. But for now, I'm just using cable ties just to get the frame ready. Get in there. And these will last for a very long time once they're made. Because it's plastic and aluminium, it don't corrode so much. Check that out for a frame. As you can see, it's really low profile. And I'm gonna have, the hence the reason for the three overall shapes. There'll be an entrance here, an entrance here, and an entrance here. And it'll be so low to the ground. Because lobsters love to stick close to the ground, they will come right up into the crab wheel. I'm calling it a crab wheel, but it's a crab pot, really. 
and they put there which walk straight up from the rocks straight in and hopefully while we're fishing we can pluck out a few lobsters so I'm gonna go off get the bolts now and I'm gonna get this all bolted up and I'll show you how we design the rest so stay tuned Woo! that's it all bolted up I've got lock knots on them all so that frame there is gonna last absolute years and all I'm doing now is We've got our netting. This is just old crab pot netting. You can get it anywhere, really. You can buy it at the shop or, or you can go to a fisherman and he'd probably have some spare, to be fair. So all I'm doing is going to get the sides, top and bottom, all netted. Just like so. And all I'm doing is just laying it over. Actually, I'll start at the bottom first. And all you're doing find a nice square with no big holes in lay it out nicely on the top looks pretty good get that there there we go and all I'm doing is I'm going to go round with my cable ties and just get it rough for now Just like that and all I'm doing is just going to keep working my way around the wheel tightening it as I go so it'll all be nice and stretched out but not too tight because we're going to bind this with rope we want a little bit of give so when we bind it it pulls it perfect so I'm going to get on that now and I'll show you when it's finished So that's the basic idea of it, that's the bottom really spread out, you see there's a bit of give there for when I wrap it. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to film the rest of the netting, you're just working your way around, covering the area, get it all zip tied and cutting the excess off. So I'll get, get back to you once I've got this netted. That's all the surround done now, all nice, fairly tight. I've left the top off for now because I want to start putting in the entrances and all I'm doing on every single circle part of the wheel is I've got some netting that I've created a bag with and all I'm doing is I'm going to cut a hole out quite a big hole enough so this stretches onto that so in on site it's going to look like this when it's in the wheel and what happens is when the crabs come in they they get in and then they get stuck so I'll, I'll show you how I set this up now and I want it very close to the floor so that they walk straight up from the floor and in just like so you can see mesh bag is perfectly there and all I do now is back to the zip ties I like to do it from the outside and then I push it through later on and it just makes things a little bit neater. There we go. What I'm doing is just going around matching the end of my end of my loop. I say loop, the mesh, the mesh loop. And I'm just gonna go all the way around and I'll show you what I do next. So that's the bag in now, and as you can see, it's created a walkway for the lobsters to get in. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut this in half because I want these very short, so they got enough room. And then I'll show you how I fix it in place, and then how it traps the lobsters in. The good thing to note is when you're cutting your entrance, make the top part longer than the bottom. And as you can see, I've I've made a cut in the bottom here and at the top I'm going about two inches over Come on. Ah. just like so just make sure you can see that beautiful 
And what we're doing is, as you can see, the top, once I pull these out, the top flaps down over it, creating a, a walkway. So the lobsters will go in and walk underneath this trap. Just like that, I'm gonna face it up this way. So then, like that, you can see, it starts spreading over the hole. So I'm gonna get that all tied in now, get the others done, and I'll show you the next step, guys. It's quite a time consuming part this, tying it all together and stuff. So I won't film it all, but that's, that's how you get them all fitted. Lovely job. So that's all the entrances in now. As you can see, we've got three entrances, plenty of room for the lobsters to walk about. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that very well, the entrances are about four inches from the bottom. And this one's really tight, and the bottom one will flap over. So, that, on all of them as well, they all do it. That's the better representation of one. The lobsters will crawl in. Do, 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 do. And then that will flap over. And what they tend to do is walk around the bottom of the pot. That's why you want these elevated. So they will walk underneath the trap holes instead of through them while back out. You're always going to get the odd one get out, but... This is looking wicked. As you can see, she's looking cool. Got all the entrances in. That was the worst part. And all we got is a piece for the top. As you can see, I'm gonna get this one really tight on the, on, the, on the top of it. So I'm gonna get on that now, and I'll show you how I make the entrance to get in to get the lobsters out and the bait and the bait holder. That's the crab pot fully netted now. You can see, slim profile. Got our three entrances. Lovely job. And what I'm going to do now, before I cut the entrance, I'm going to bind it all up with rope. That bird will not shut up. So we've got leaded rope that I'm going to wrap all the way around the bottom and the top. And that acts as a buffer for the rock so none of this gets taken out or worn out. Hell yeah. So I'm going to get on that now quite a laborious job so once again I won't film the whole lot but I'll show you how to start it there we go doing it's just threading it through I like to go every two holes that usually leaves a good amount just to start it I like to wrap it through a bit if you bind it round and then when you come back, you can tie onto this, so then there's no, no loose parts. And the whole idea of it is, once I find the end, so I'm gonna go in, in the hole, the closest holes to the rim, because you don't want to pull it down too tight, because this will tighten up as you go along with this. So you wanna get it through there. This is the job that wears your fingers out. Get it. I'm just pulling it through, get it nice and tight, and repeating the process. And this will tighten everything up. Yeah, like I said, it acts as a buffer as well against the rocks. Because there might be times that I throw this out in the uh, in a gully and I might leave it there so it's going to get bashed up a little bit and as you can see we're starting to create loads of coils around the crab pot that's the first wrap that we did and all I've done is gone over it and that's solid so I cut it off there so there we go and the tag ends here so what I'm going to do is you can see how streamlined that is now everything's really tight so I'm going to go up here and then start the top I'm going to carry on with that, with that now and show you the finished product. Finally got all the way round now. 
you can see, run out of rope on one pot. So we've got the blue one. And where I've come to the end, I've created a nice loop. This is where we're going to attach the crab pot. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going to run down this side part here because there's a little hole in the corner. And then I'll tie this off. And that's our anchor for the rope. There we go, get that same length. Just like that. And I'm gonna wrap it all the way down for the entrance and the bait holder guys. All I'm doing is get my knife. And I'm just cutting a hole. Just like so. Just enough so we can get our hand in, reach around, pull out a lobster. And for the bait, what I'm gonna do is get my piece of wire about so long and all I'm doing is creating two loops and what you're doing is you're trying to avoid all the edges and you want the bait quite high up so the lobsters have to come in to get it and then I'll have another loop just here there we go get it all twisted up Go. I like to face one flat that way and one this way so you can you can tie off your other piece of wire on this one and it threads through easy wrap it right round the top of the crab wheel the uh, crab pot sorry so then as the lobsters come in they've got to reach out for the bait so I'm going in there tie it off here come on quite fiddly this with the wire but once you get it you're all good there we go and as you can see our two rings are right at the top and they'll be dangling down get this one tied off and all you need now is just a little piece of wire about so long and you tie off to this one there we go get that on there And then what you're doing is you're just putting it through this one. So there you go, you've got both of your holes there. And now your bait will be almost directly on the top of the crab pot. So it's been literally just out of reach of the lobsters. So the lobsters have to come in, get their body into the crab wheel to actually reach the bait. And all I do to close the hole up is get a piece of string. go small uni knot whatever knot you want to do you can granny knot it there we go get that singed down a bit that's tied off beautiful and all I do to close it up is literally just wrapping through you're just closing the entrance up again just to stop the lobsters trying to escape and when you tie it off, just make sure you don't don't tie it too well, because it will. Uh, you don't want it coming on. Uh, sorry, you don't want to not be able to get it off off the wheel. So just a couple of half hitches with it. There we go. All tied up. We've got our bait holder, and all that's left now is just a weight. For the weights, what I've got is two small sash weights. I can just pop those in the fishing bag. And all I do when we're fishing is just put one each side, cable tie them on. It doesn't have to be nothing too permanent, just so you can, uh, haven't got a cable tie with me anymore. I've used all of them on this. And that's it, you can just cut the, ca the uh, cable ties off and put the weights back in your bag when you're done. And this must weigh about two kilos. It's, it's so much lighter than it looks. And that's all it is. Make sure the bait's dangling down. And what I've got is six mil floating rope for my crab for this, just because I'm not leaving it on a bobber. If you're uh, leaving this on a bobber, then uh, you definitely want sinking rope. Otherwise it could end up in boat props and that's the last thing you want. And that's all, all it is guys. 
that will be tied off to this as we're fishing we're going to throw this out and then hopefully get some nice big lobsters what i'm doing now guys is i've got the uh pipe in here and what you got to do is drill holes loads of series of holes in them and that is very important because the air inside of these will create buoyancy and that's the last thing you want so just all the way around like we've done on this one there's lots of holes happy days you get it sunk stuck on the bottom and hopefully catching some lobsters awesome little lobster pot for your fishing it's easy lightweight and hopefully you get a couple of lobsters out of it so i hope you enjoyed this one guys there's gonna be plenty more to come hopefully we can get a few lobsters next time we're conga fishing so stay tuned if you like my channel like subscribe it's smash fishing